All right, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to debug and test your mapping data flows using Azure Data Factory. So the first thing you should do when you begin building your data flows is turn on the debug button. There's a switch at the top that switches you into debug mode. What that does is behind the scenes, it will um, stand up a Databricks cluster that we use uh, for Spark, that we use for our testing and for execution of data flows. Now, that'll take about five to seven minutes to warm up, so it's a good idea to get that going, and then you can start building your data flows. You can build your data flows and work with um, Data Factor while that's spinning. This is a background process. When it's ready, the light will turn green, and you'll see which integration runtime you're using. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. There's a new feature here that I'm demonstrating for you that's going to land here this week. Now, I'm not going to go over any of the de details of building the data flows, because I want to show you instead how to go through the full end-to-end -end process of debug and testing. But I add a source, which is the first step you have to do with the data flow, and I define my data set for that. So I'm using my movies uh, data set, which is a file data set. I'll show you what the projection looks like. It's very simple, and there's a few thousand rows in here of data. Now from the source, you go to data preview. So once your debug mode is ready and your cluster is available, you can start previewing your data. So the idea is that within the uh, debug mode, of data flow, as you build your uh, logic, you would validate that logic step by step. So of course here on the source, the data is just a, uh, the, the preview is just a quick glance at the data uh, completely, you know, there's no transformations at this point, it's, it's the pure view of the data. But then as you start to build your logic, let's add a derived column onto here, and for the derived column, uh, let me do something like, let me just quick show you, by the way, how you would do something like if you want to obfuscate data. So we have um, titles is a column in here, the titles in the movies. Let's say that you want to keep that private. Uh, one way to do that would be to use one of our hashing functions. Let me use SHA-2. We'll do 256 on, the, um, on that column. And now we'll get an obfuscated view. Uh, or essentially, we're going to hide the actual data, going to do some masking. Now, within the expression builder itself, you can preview your data. So again, this is a good way to debug and to validate your logic step by step. And yeah, that looks, well, these are the same, so you see the same hash. That looks great. So now, within the data preview on the overall transformation itself, the drive column, you can also take a look at now the complete set of data with that um, modified column. And there it is, that looks perfect. So this is how you debug and test within Dataflow. Now, there is a button here called Debug Settings where you can adjust our sampling. So the, the important thing to keep in mind is that we limit the number of rows coming into the preview to make the preview experience very fast for you. Um, you can change with the debug settings here, you can change the number of rows that we bring in. You can make it fewer, you can make it as many as you like. That, keep that in mind because when we limit the number of rows, it, it makes the experience very uh, not very quick. However, what that means is that if you have joins or lookups and you're expecting certain keys to exist in your data, we may not get to that uh, key within the limit that you've set. So you may sometimes find some, um, you know, occasionally within your lookups or your joins and the debug data preview may not show the results you're looking for. You may get nulls on that. Just keep that in mind. You can always bump up the row limit or if you have a sampling of data with the keys you have in it, you can use a sample file. So a sample file will replace your source data for the debug run, only for the debug run, not for the operationalizing of your, uh, of your data flow. So what you would do there is you would tell us where the data is, you point to that file within your blob, and let's say I had a file down here I want to use data.txt, I could use that file. If you don't have a file on Blob, you have it only on your laptop, you can go ahead and click Upload File, and you'll be able to bring in a local file that way as well. So those are the ways to adjust and, and to modify the settings on your debug. Now let's finish this up with a sync. So you have to have a sync to operationalize your data flow. I can save this work, and I can continue without a sync, and I can work in data preview mode within the data flow designer. However, when I go to try to execute this data flow from a pipeline, I must have a sync validation will not pass with that. But to avoid that and to just save your work and to have versions of your data flow without needing to have it validated, you must connect into your GitHub or your DevOps. So I highly recommend within uh, debug and testing of your data flows that you use a repo for your uh, for your designing. Do not, uh, the other option by the way, without using GitHub or DevOps, 
that you have that using repo is to go directly against the service, which is called just data factory here. Uh, you can do that. However, you, you don't have the save option. You're always, always publishing instead of being able to save, merge, and then publish. All right, so let's go ahead and back to the sync. Now for the sync, I need to put this somewhere. I'm going to put this into a folder. Boom. And um, so I'm going to leave it all in, essentially in the lake sort of formats. And I'm going to leave the partition files. This is fine just for the demo. Now, when you go to data preview on the sync, what's important to note here is the data preview within debug does not actually write any data. So we don't honor um, the settings within your um, sync. We're just showing you what the data will look like when you land it in your final destination. Now, what I do want to set on my sync, though, for testing is I do want to say that I'm going to clear the folder. The reason I'm going to do this is because if you look at my Azure Blob Store already, uh, right now, let me go back up to my output folder, which is where this is going, and this is going to output. And actually, yeah, you know what? Let me show you the folder this is going to go to. So the folder it's going to go to is set in your um, in your data set. And in my data set, I am putting the file into uh, my container, and I have a file a folder structure here called output slash my data flow one two three part files. Um, if these folders do not exist, Data Factory will automatically create those for you. I do have these already, though, as you can see, and right here is the folder. Now, I had some previous executions that I ran, so I want
breeze within your organization. Okay, I'm going to end it there. I hope that that helps in terms of understanding the end-to-end -end, uh, debug and test of data flows. Thanks for watching.